So I'm going to start recording now. And what I might do is I've got a little clip of a steam train coming in when I visited the site uh, with Ian. So when we came up and did a site visit, I might sort of have that as a little intro. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you all very much for joining us. Um, my name is Georgia Newman. I'm the Visual Arts Manager for Key Arts and I'm joined today with John Payton who is the uh, Museum's Curator at Isle of Wight Steam Railway at Haven Street. Um, he has been with Isle of Wight Steam Railway for 10 years and has worked hard to turn the museum around with a small team to interpret the history of Isle of Wight Steam Railway. And today we're going to have a Zoom talk about our exhibition, um, which is entirely online now, and it's called Off the Rails, and celebrates the 50th anniversary of, um, of our White Steam Railway with the move from Newport to Haven Street. And 50 years ago, on the 24th of January, uh, the final trains moved from Newport to Haven Street. Um, marking quite an important day, I feel, for the island's transport history, for a change from being a commutable access um, transport to uh, a heritage site, uh, a very important heritage site. Um, so what we, <laughs> what we planned to do was show an exhibition in our West Gallery with artefacts, signs and memorabilia from uh, the collection at Isle of Wight Steam Railway, as well as related objects and artworks from the Isle of Wight Heritage Service Collection and some pieces from um, AJ Wells and Sons. Um, unfortunately, as with many exhibitions uh, in museums and galleries up and down the country, um, we're unable to bring you the physical show. Um, we have photographed the work and tried to digitise it as much as possible um, to bring you some kind of online gallery experience. And with this talk, we're going to discuss um, a few select pieces from the Heritage Collection. And we invited artists as well to respond to the exhibition, to respond to um, the ideas around steam rail, um, fairly broad subjects as well. So we're going to have a little look at some of the artists' work, but we'll have slideshows available on our website of all of the works that were brought to the key, which we've digitised, and the artist submissions. And we have some lovely little pieces from uh, two island schools as well, which we will show. So what we're going to talk about today is, um, I think just a bit about of how it all began really, and a little bit about the anniversary. So if I'd like to introduce um, John, um, <laughs> if uh, you could give us a little bit of a, uh, a talk about you know, how did it all start? A brief explanation or potted history, I suppose, of the Island Steam Railway and, and its move 50 years ago. Georgia, thank you. And it's, can I say it's a privilege to work with you and your uh, colleagues at uh, Key Arts on this exhibition. And um, I think um, it's going to be highly successful one way or another, despite the restrictions of this wretched COVID. Yes. Um, 1971, uh, January the 24th is a very key date, but of course the uh, Isle of Wight Steam Railway has its antecedents uh, right at the end of steam on the island some three years before, um, when it was recognised that something needed to be done to preserve um, at least an engine and one or two uh, carriages for it, and a enterprising group of teenagers, mainly from London, uh, a number of whom are still active with the railway today, um, managed to salvage some bits and pieces, and um, these were sent to Newport Station. And by 1971, in the early part of the year, Newport Station was closed, it was going to be demolished, and the track was going to be demolished around it, and a centre for the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, as it became, it was the White Locomotive Society to start with, 
needed to be found. There were several locations, believe it or not, that were looked at across the island, but Haven Street was chosen in the end as the most suitable one. And I think history has shown that it was a brilliant choice overall. So what happened was that all of a sudden in mid-January, 50 years ago, the White Locomotive Society were given four days notice to remove everything from Newport to Haven Street. So and just four, four days, that's uh, a very uh, short space of time. Yes, short as that, because the track was going to be ripped up by the scrapmen. So um, in those days, the working parties and the volunteers um, would come at weekends because they were mostly working people or people at school or university. And um, so that was really the last day, Sunday the 24th, uh, when they could come and remove all the stock from the Newport station, which was going to be uh, demolished. So that was a key date for the railway. And you can see in this wonderful image that Newport station is pretty derelict, that there are lots of people who come to see this event from all over the place. Interesting to note that health and safety, as we know, of course, uh, didn't really exist um, mm -hmm. with, with people all over the place. Luckily, the engine Calborn, uh, which um, was the engine that was bought by the White Locomotive Society from British Rail. Um, the volunteers were able to get that into a condition where it could pull the carriages and the other wagons to Haven Street. And um, we've actually just seen on um, in the County Press, which came out on Friday, the 15th of January, um, a piece by Alan Stroud, um, some interesting images of the, the change in, in Newport um, and the sites. I mean, it was a very bustling place, you know, I mean, the harbour being active as well. I mean, that bridge that cross where the dual carriageway currently is, it was a sliding track bridge and to enable the ships to pass through as the kiosk yeah. centre was the, was the warehouse for Mew Langton's brewery, which was also just across the river so um the, the site itself was incredibly bustling back in its heyday and then it became this this you know awful sort of derelict site and then and then sort of ripped up and and turned into what it is now it's interesting to obviously hear what people have to say about that as the the heyday when it all um became quite i suppose destructive or or, or how it is now actually a very active place and and there are obviously plans ahead um, with the harbour regeneration plan. So I think what we're going to do is show a short clip of um, of that move that that day that um, that day 50 years ago. Um, and you'll see it's, it, it's it's sort of like a moment of spectacle. I think everyone kind of knew it was that last day that, that, that right. train, those trains were going and you can see families coming together. And it was a, it was a huge event. Um, and people just sat on the train lines, um, just watching. So we'll, we'll show a short clip of that. Um, but I think when you watch it, do imagine sort of uh, this was our that was that were people's access uh, to go to certain places on the island. And if you imagine even just like the ferry companies um, suddenly turning into um, sort of a tourist, um, I don't know, heritage boat ride um across the Solent and and lesser of a degree to be in a um a commutable access route to the mainland um just think about sort of how that you know that sort of change that mode of transport and and how that has uh, an effect on um on 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 a society I suppose and how you get around so we'll have a short clip of that now
so that was interesting watching that and you can see the full film by John Bartlett uh, on our website um, so thank you very much John for creating that it's a very sweet um, video so uh, it, 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 it's, it does show a very important time in, I, I think in our in our history in our social and transport history so um, and just sort of picking up on that the sort of the, the works that are available that you can view online um, as part of the heritage collection are a bit of a comment on our social history um, and particularly through these images um, which I'm going to share with you now and one image is um, uh, called Mrs Merwood I believe it's a photograph um, so John can you say a few things about this image Yes, this is at um, Whippingham Station, and um, it's interesting for several reasons. Uh, first of all, of course, Whippingham Station was the uh, nearest one to Osborne House. Um, no evidence that I've come across that Queen Victoria ever travelled on a train on the island, no reason for her to do so, but uh, members of the household would use it from time to time to escape the rather oppressive um, court and uh, I think they would go and play golf at various places. But what is particularly interesting from a railway point of view is this lady, Mrs. Merwood, who acted as station master, porter, signal person, and so on. And a number of the island railways employed women, uh, partly, of course, because they were a lot cheaper than men in those days. But sometimes, of course, uh, their husbands would be uh, employed by the railways as well and it would provide a home for the family. And as you can see in this image, the station house here at Whippingham looks quite a desirable residence. Mm. And um, it's, it's, I think, just a really lovely kind of character or, which we picked up when my, myself and my, my colleague Ian Whitmore, when we came over to investigate some of the the pieces held in your collection. I think this was in the cafe, in your cafe at the time and, and having a bit of a change around. Um, we, we saw these and we thought they were just lovely. So um, there is another, there are two more images that I just wanted to um, share with our viewers and one which is a photograph of Mill Hill. And there's a, a really interesting story that you, you told us about that. So could you tell us about Mill Hill and um, yeah, and, and the, sort of like the little story about it or, or you know what, what actually goes on uh, well, yes. <laughs> back in the day there was a saying is that right <laughs> i think you might close your ears for this one uh, georgia but uh, <laughs> yes mill hill is an interesting station because it's it's not far from the main cows terminal station but what it reminds us of course is that mill hill was a residential part of cows and uh, therefore it was thought that it warranted a station but fast forward uh, to more recent days and um one of our uh, colleagues who worked with me um, on the museum, um, who remembers back in the day, that uh, young bucks who uh, would take their girlfriends out for an evening, on the next day, um, they would be chatting to their mates as to how the evening went. And um, if the evening wasn't as successful as they'd hoped for, uh, the phrase was, well, we had to get out at Mill Hill. In other words, they didn't go all the way to cows. There was one other photograph that I wanted to share, and that was, I don't know, we don't know too much about the photograph or um, the the signage that's in there, sort of um, says uh, um, Portsmouth table water, I believe, and pears. Um, so I tried to have a little look online and see what I could find, but this is an image of the, um, it's a photograph of Haven Street on White Central Days, um, and it has two women uh, on the platform. What's the rough date, do you think, that this... this well, I, I guess that's late Victorian, um, late 19th century, early 20th century. Um, in those days, the Haven Street station was not an island platform with a passing loop as it has today. And that uh, building that you see there, that timber building of the Isle of Wight Central Railway is a very typical uh, station building uh, from a rural station on the Isle of Wight. And you will see a pastiche of that building 
at our Wooten station today. And it's been modeled on that station building you see there. And yes, Georgia, you mentioned all these advertising hoardings and things. And um, of course, they were very much uh, contemporary um, with the age, although Pears soap is still available today. Um, I bought um, I bought some just before Christmas, believe it or not. So um, that has existed until today. Lovely. Well, that, I mean, yes, uh, soap. Yeah, I do know. And um, uh, if anyone else knows anything about um, the advertisements or um uh, then we'd love to hear about them um we've actually got two pieces from the Isle of Wight Heritage Collection um I don't know you know too much about them but um have asked us if we if we can share them and and, and I, I think you said that they are highly collectible if you wanted to uh or, or rather you know um train enthusiasts would absolutely love to see these hung up in their in their homes um, so we, again, we're really, really sad and, um, that we couldn't show them in a physical sense, um, but uh, here they are anyway as part of our um, digitised um, online exhibition. Um, and so the first one is a train sign from the Isle of Wight Service, um, the Isle of Wight Heritage Service Collection. Um, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a green sign. Um, and I think you've got one similar as well in your collection, is that right? Yes, um, they were very often the sort of sign that would probably be at a level crossing. There were many, many level crossings on the island railway system. Um, um, but that one's particularly interesting because it's in the Southern Railway era, which is before 1923, and in the green. So is is quite desirable, as Georgia mentioned, for collectors. And even more interesting and unusual, and um, it's, it's of course had a rather hard life, as you can see, is this enamel sign for the Isle of Wight Central Railway in the Isle of Wight Central Blue. You would have seen on that image um, that we looked at on Haven Street Station in the Isle of Wight Central days, and that would have been a maroon color, but they also use this rather vivid blue color. So, a highly desirable piece for many collectors and interesting to have. Yeah, and um, we did hope to show uh, some works on loan from AJ Wells um, because that they, you know, that they've created many, many enamel signs uh, for London Underground um, across the island. And, and it's really interesting just to sort of see the change in graphics and layout and text, um, text font and, and colours. So um, we will be able to uh, show those hopefully as part of a, a growing online offer. Um, so uh, what I think we'll touch on now is actually the artist responses, because uh, to try and make this obviously as varied as possible and, and remembering that artists have responded to um, steam rail uh, across um, the years and we were actually going to show some work by <clears throat> excuse me an artist called Sally uh, Waterman in our Claydon Gallery show um, uh, although unrelated she has actually um, produced work in the past she's a contemporary photographer um, and she has some wonderful images and concertina books um, which look at the idea of journey and, and travel on the train and it's very quite sentimental um, there's also an artist called Andrew Cross. Um, he is a, a contemporary, contemporary British filmmaker um, and he's produced a, a number of uh, videos which you can view on his uh, website. Um, so yeah, they're, they're two to really look out for. And, um, and of course, you know, we have, you know, we are sort of aware of some of the other works that we've seen in the past. Um, um, I believe it's a painting in 1844 uh, by Turner, Rain, Steam and Speed, the Great Western Railway, um, and, and some poetry, some beautiful pieces, um, some by Wordsworth and Emily Dickinson. So um, just to have a look at, see what artists have been producing now, um, we received works um, by a number of artists and we selected 12 island artists responding to ideas around the notion of um, preservation, displacement, uh, memory, and some wider themes on travel, engineering, and movement. So we kept it all quite broad, um, and we had some really interesting uh, submissions, uh, one of which we're gonna have a little look at, um, and is uh, by an artist called Mark Chettle, um, and he created these two portraits of Stephen Roundtree. 
Um, so I'm just going to read out his artist statement. Um, uh, so it gives a bit of a background to those two pieces. On devising a concept for this exhibition, I thought it poignant to honour one of the more human engines of the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. Steve Roundtree was selected as one of the most skilled volunteers at Haven Street. Former painter in the carriage and wagon workshop, he is responsible for the exceptional finish of the rolling stock. A lawyer by profession, he still practices part time. Painting is in his DNA going back 100 years when his grandfather founded a high class decorating business after World War I. It was a pleasure and privilege to draw Steve's portrait. I used a cartridge pen with a food nib and it to add energy to the lines and mimic the grubby bustle of the workshop. Um, so I, I want to say thank you so much to all of the artists that participated in, in, this, um, in this online exhibition. We're going to show all of the images, um, but here are obviously the ones by Steve Roundtree, um, sorry, by Mark Chettle of Steve Roundtree. Um, yeah, and, and obviously you know Steve uh, particularly well, working at the Isle of Steam Railway, John. Yes, um, he is uh, one of our most remarkable um, people who work for us. Though we've got many people with lots and lots of skills, but um, Steve is responsible for the turnout of the carriages and the wagons mm -hmm. to an exceptionally high standard. And as you mentioned, it's in his DNA going back to a business that his grandfather started after the uh, First World War, although um, he's actually, that is Steve, is actually a, a lawyer by profession. Um, but um, yes, he's a very modest person and I must admit it took me quite a bit to persuade him to <laughs> have his portrait <laughs> done, but I'm, I'm hoping he won't hold it against me and um, that he'll be as, as, as uh, thrilled as I am because it really does encapsulate the intensity of his concentration as he's working away at painting and you know I can tell you that his method of painting is far removed from what most of us would do when we get out a paintbrush to decorate our houses um, it's a very very different skill to that and takes a lot of time to learn and Steve is particularly good and particularly patient at teaching people this method and um, the uh, carriage and wagon workshop is has got this rather lovely sort of atmosphere to it um, with all these people working away happily and um, it's uh, one of our one of our many great assets wonderful i mean it that i found was a really really lovely very poignant way of um celebrating the 50th anniversary and those that are continuing to help um Isle of White's steam railway and, uh, and preserve its its um, magnificent history so um, uh, talking of sort of preservation, there, um, there is, or, or, or conservation, we're, we're going into a piece now which is um, by Vicky, uh, sorry, Victoria Fellows, um, and it's called Restoration of Time, and it's an artist book, essentially, um, but it's contained within a small pocket watch case, um, and it's a concertina style book structure containing drawings of the tools and equipment used in the repair and restoration of watches. Um, such as weren't used for the casing. Um, so again, quite a very different interpretation on um, our on what is steam railway um, off the rails exhibition. But um, as you said, John, time is, is is a very important factor in 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 train travel. So what I like about that image is the fact that it represents the pocket watch that was used by railway people up until fairly recently. And we've got quite an interesting collection of them in the Small Artifacts Museum at Haven Street. And sometimes these watches would be given to employees when they retired. But um, each individual railway company um, had a slightly different watch and they can often be identified with the name of the railway on them but they were a key part of making sure that everything ran smoothly. Yeah, and um, yeah, thank, thank, thank you for that. And, and, and thanks to Victoria for sending that uh, through. So, um, and finally, I, I, I'd like to show a piece by Sandy Kendall, um, an artist who um, 
whose work I, I, I do know and, and I think she, she mainly deals with portraits. So it's been really interesting uh, seeing, I guess, a lot of artists come out of their comfort zone uh, for this project. So um, she, she uh, has a piece called Voyager and decided to express all uh, the steam, uh, the power of steam and smoke uh, through a compilation of, of words um, before making her piece um, and then created a, a small text piece uh, a poem which I'll read out and so the words which she'd first started to assemble were shrouded, uh, grith, smoke, steam, clouds, dragons, power, heavy, iron, noise and then she began a series of drawings using sharp tonal contrast in compressed charcoal to express all the strength and atmosphere and she started then to transfer that process onto canvas adding structure in the form of cut um, uh, poly, uh, sorry, polypropylene sections uh, which extend beyond the canvas suggesting the train moving into an outer di uh, destination. Um, so the poem by Sandy, um, I'll read is, you, so this is, so this is by Sandy Kendall. You have to notice one of these trains, all power and steamy fuss. The stuff one of these produces made it seem even bigger to a small child clutching an older hand waiting to board. I watched and heard with nervous awe all that metal vapour and smoke arrive. Then there was that massive leap onto the narrow step and into the carriage with a quick glance down at the gap, revealing gravel and wheels far below, followed by the slamming of all the doors, one after the other. Journey begun. So thank you for that, um, Sandy. And that's just actually made me think a little bit about the, um, I think it was the first um, film ever recorded, uh, which is of the, the train pulling in to the station. Do you, I, I think I was looking at this quite early on when we first built up a discussion around um, this particular project, around this exhibition. And that having such an impact, viewers finding that the, the train was going to come and out of the video, out of the screen. Um, but I think in that there is a small child, really small, I think a little girl, and she's, you know, obviously about to board. And that platform, that, you know, step to get up onto the train must, you know, just seem like, yeah, absolutely huge um, to a child. So I think that is a, a very lovely, th lovely piece there by Sandy Kendall and actually um, conjures up a lot of things with the with the um, with the poem as well to long, go alongside that. So again, I'm so sorry we're unable to show all of the artist's work in this particular Zoom talk, but all of the work will be available as a slideshow on our website, um, and uh, you know we'll be we'll be looking at them on our social media as well. So do check in on that. Um, so we also had some pieces from schools um, responding to Isle of Wight Steam Railway. Um, so I'm really pleased to show you some of the pieces made um, as a response, all about trains by Gurnard Primary. Um, and it's a, a stop frame animation created using um, Stop Motion Pro in situ at Gurnard Primary and at Jubilee Stores. And uh, our learning and participation manager and um, artist, Ian Whitmore, worked with year one students at Gurnard Primary, exploring trains um, all the way from uh, Stevenson's rocket, which is a very early, early steam locomotive in the uh, early, early <laughs> 1800s, um, right through to cutting edge uh, maglev transport, which is the uh, type of train using um, magnets to repel and push the train and elevate the train. So um, they used a series of black and white templates um, uh, for the students to decorate and cut out and make a procession of engines uh, tenders and carriages that were then animated uh, using a smartphone stop frame animation so software. So that video, the full length video is on our website. Um, and then uh, two lovely pieces were made through Oakfield Primary um, at Ride, exploring again the heritage of the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. Um, uh, and again with artist Ian Whitmore, and they created large format free hand drawings of the Isle of Wight Steve Rail flagship locomotive O2 class W24 uh, uh, Calborn, 
and a ride peer tram car from uh, the year two and year four students. Um, and they were collaged with hand cups and painted papers. Um, they had this mosaic like technique, which uh, was inspired by an, another island artist called Nick Martin. And he created this hand painted collage, collage of ride gateway to the island um, last year. So that was one of their inspirations. And Calborn and the tram car were selected as both as a hard, uh, as a, as they both had working life on the island and later in 1971 helped haul the steam railways historic carriages from Newport to their new home at Haven Street, which as we say is a, exactly 50 years ago. So um, yeah, quite uh, a lot of work, I suppose, which we've, we've managed to cover there quite an eclectic um, uh, um, series of work. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's very important, I suppose in sort of our um, duty as a, as a gallery to be able to hold works of historical importance and, and be able to shine a light on that and, and be able to represent artists uh, responding to that um, as well. So we're, we're really, really privileged to have been able to show all of this wonderful work. And I, and I just want to um, <laughs> express my, my gratitude to Isle of Steam Railway and to you, John, for being a part of this and bringing it to us. And I, I am obviously still very, very sad that we're not, unable to bring the exhibition in the physical sense. Um, but hopefully there is enough content here for people to, um, you know, get their chops around and, and, and have a look on our social media as well, as we'll be um, uploading more information as the months pass. So um, this exhibition will continue uh, online throughout February as well and into March. And so the hopes and futures for <laughs> for this we, we will try and obviously get something going with you in the future in your in one of your rooms your AV room um, as a physical exhibition in the future once we're all able to reopen and invite the public back to our sites um, isn't that right John I mean what I mean that's one of the plans that we have and any other sort of plans that you have as part of your commemorations um, you know people can obviously have a look on your website aren't they Thank you, Georgia. Yes, um, we're very much hoping that um, we will be able to mount this exhibition in the AV room at Haven Street, which has been beautifully decorated out, even with a new carpet, um, which is going to sort of supplement the New Zealand Gallery, which we haven't been able to open, unfortunately, during the COVID um, situation. And um, we'll be having a 50th anniversary exhibition in there which is going to be designed to give people a very quick overview of the 50 years. We're also preparing a supplement to the Isle Island um, Railway News uh, magazine, which comes out primary for members, uh, which will tell the story in much more detail. Unfortunately, of course, the, uh, the 24th of January will be in lockdown, so there won't be any public celebrations, but we're hoping that we will recreate the first train that uh, took passengers at Easter 1971 on the 12th of April this year. So with luck that will come off. And um, there is, I think in June, going to be a, uh, a gala to celebrate the 50th anniversary. There will be other events which will appear on the website. But of course, at the moment, everything has to be a little bit tentative because none of us really know exactly when we're going to be able to open and what we'll be able to do but um exactly we're right. certainly being yeah. very positive about it yeah and um so i hope we, we've made the best we can of of uh, the situation um but obviously with the celebrations continuing throughout the year we'll be there and we hope everyone else can as well um i know i can't wait to take my boys on the on the steam railway finally um so fingers crossed you know eventually once we're we're out of lockdown we'll all be able to um visit these wonderful cultural sites um unfortunately the exhibition will not be at the key at key art center but um will be at haven street so or please everyone do look out for that um online and, and any information we can share uh, with our um with our followers so thank you very much john and um, if anyone has any um, comments that they want to make um, or, or has any stories of their own or remembers that amazing day on the 24th of January, 1974, uh, 71, um, marking that 50th anniversary, then please do write your stories. We'd love to hear them. 
Um, but for now, thank you, John. Thank and you, I'll see Georgia. You soon. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>